Today we celebrate the Feast of the Epiphany. For most of us, it's kind of a conclusion to the Christmas season. Today, the three wise men get their, their moment in the sun. As you can see here, they've made their long journey from the basement storage area to our beautiful crib scene. But for most of us, we are thinking about putting the, away the Christmas decorations and getting rid of the trees, many tossed into the front yard, stripped of all the ornaments and garland. Yet before we say goodbye to Christmas, we have this one more feast day, the celebration of the epiphany, the manifestation of the word made flesh, the revelation of the Savior come down from heaven as a baby, a time for us to adore the Christ child once more. But today we live in a world that seems to carry us farther and farther away from that Christ child, that peace and goodwill. We live in a world where secularism and violence and self-absorption seem to have a grip on society. And not just in faraway places or war-torn areas, but even here, close to home. So three things today. First, where is the light? Second, it's okay to be a seeker. And third, be the light. Our first reading is that beautiful poem from the book of Isaiah that we always read on the Feast of Epiphany. The prophet announces the good news of the restoration of Israel by saying, rise up in splendor, Jerusalem, your light has come. Over you appears his glory. But even in Isaiah's day, there was plenty of reason for gloom and darkness, and certainly so too in our day. Atheism and relativism and people describing themselves as nuns, as in no religious affiliation at all, at an all-time high. Last week, my family and I were out of town in northern Michigan, and the church where we attended Mass had a laminated card in the pews. And the prayer on the laminated card was entitled, Prayer for Those Who Have Fallen Away. And the pastor said, we say this prayer every Mass, every single Mass, prayer for those who have fallen away. And yet, it is not all bleak and darkness. There is, especially recently, in the past five years or so, a sense of rebirth, of lifting of these thick clouds hovering. Just in September of last year, an author by the name of Justin Brierly published a book entitled The Surprising Rebirth of Belief in God. Perhaps some of you have heard of it. In this book, Briarly describes a recent phenomenon, a new set of secular thinkers turning away from what he describes as the materialistic non-story of reality as they consider how the Christian story speaks to today's meaning crisis. In other words, people are recognizing or perhaps re-recognizing that there must be more to life than just us. We are built for relationship. We are built for love. We are built to respond to something higher and greater than ourselves. Which brings me to point number two. It's okay to be a seeker. There was an article in the Wall Street Journal this week written by Bishop Robert Barron that I commend to your reading. Now, Bishop Barron is not a regular contributor to the journal, but the article that it was in the journal was entitled, The Incarnation Changes Even Non-Believers. Bishop Barron's premise in the article is that the Christmas message is so powerful that it affects even those who do not believe that Jesus is the Messiah, or even those who do not believe in God at all. 
He says in this article, if you've taken in the story of the baby who is God, you simply aren't the same person you were before. Bishop Barron goes on to say that even if you are a person with no faith whatsoever, your understanding of God is forever changed when confronted with a God who becomes both creator and creature. The closer the creator gets to the creature, the more beautiful the creature can become. And for the non-believer, perhaps what is most unnerving about the incarnation is that if God stoops so low to join the human race, then we humans must recognize the possibility that we have a purpose and a destiny beyond the finite reality of our own existence. And we probably don't need any better example of Bishop Barron's premise than in today's gospel, the story of the Magi. We don't really know a lot about the Magi. While legend has given them the three names, those names are not identified in the Bible, and we don't know for sure who they are or what they were, though some scholars suggest that they were astronomers or scientists of some kind. But there is one thing we know for sure about the Magi. They were not Jews. They were Gentiles, non-believers, pagans most likely. But most importantly, they were seekers. They knew there was more to their existence and they were looking for it. As Bishop Barron says in this article, the Magi stand for all those down through the ages and across the cultures who have hungered and thirsted for meaning, for the ultimate good, for the living God. The mysterious star led them to the most surprising place, a cave outside the unremarkable town of Bethlehem, where a child lay in a manger. To me, the most important part to remember in this Feast of the Epiphany is not that we always find what we are seeking. The important thing is that we are seeking. All of us here have had moments of thick clouds, crises of one kind or another, periods in our lives where our meaning or our worth is called into question. Yet it is the very act of seeking which is the response which delights God. It is okay for us not to have all the answers all the time. That's for God to have, not for us. As Father Mark said in his Christmas homily, the good news is not about us and what we do or what we know or how good or perfect we are. The good news is about God saying, I don't care how messed up you are. I love you and I am the light. Come to me, I want you. Final point, be the light. The miracle of the incarnation is that the light that came into the world allows us to get beyond ourselves. We know that God is love. And St. Thomas Aquinas defines love as willing the good of the other. As Bishop Barron says so often in his writings, God became man so that man might become God, a divinization of sorts. That love that God showed to us by stooping down and living with us is our participating in the divine nature. So just as Jesus is our epiphany, we are each other's epiphany. So if your inner seeker is speaking to you this morning, this feast of the epiphany is a perfect time to consider accepting the invitation to sign up for the Rescue Project, which begins here at Notre Dame on February 6th. The Rescue Project is a great way to seek, to rediscover, or perhaps to discover for the first time that meaning that so many of us are searching for. 
The Rescue Project is a very simple program of one evening a week for eight weeks, coming together for a meal, a 45-minute video, and a small group discussion. It is very well done. And if you have that itch of, I need something else in my spiritual life, I'm seeking, this is a great way to scratch that itch. It's easy to register. Just go on to the parish website, notredameparish.org. The light has come. Let us pray that we accept the invitation to seek the light and to be the light.